All right, so as Teza said, today we're going to talk about happy dags and happy teammates and how we can make that happen. So my name is Leah. I am a developer relations engineer at Google Cloud, and this means that I am a software engineer by trade, but instead of using my software engineering skills to build and Google Cloud products, I build tools and experiences for other software engineers to more easily use Google Cloud. My day-to-day -day varies greatly, but I work on things like sample code, tutorials, blog posts, and sometimes the occasional talk, like this one. My focus is primarily on Cloud Composer, which is the hosted managed version of Apache Airflow in Google Cloud. In this talk, I will give a demo that does feature using Composer and some other Google Cloud products, but most of what I'm saying can be used regardless of if you're using Composer or another version of Airflow. Um, or other tools that aren't Google Cloud ones. I am also an Airflow committer, and I have been part of the project since 2018. I'm an organizer for the upcoming Airflow Summit in May. I highly encourage you to attend. This is our third year doing it. Um, and right now, our call for presentations is open. So if you were to go to airflowsummit.org, if you have something to say about Airflow, you should submit a possible presentation. We'd love to hear from you. And then a fun fact about me is I love knitting and crocheting and I love cats. These are the two cats in my house right now. Millie is my long-term cat and Frank is a newer addition who is quickly working on becoming a permanent resident, even though we didn't expect it. All right, so let's talk about those happy dags, happy teammates. We're gonna do a little getting to know you. I know that I can't see you, uh, but you can raise your hand in spirit. So let's raise your hand if you've ever had a DAG that worked locally, but not when you deployed it. Or if you have completely lost track of what you haven't haven't tried to make a DAG that is just not behaving work. Or even if you've just seen the big red broken DAG error at all. Or if you've had that realization where you look at Airflow and realize that the changes you were working on locally never made it to your deployed Airflow environment because you forgot. These are situations where I would say you're dealing with some unhappy DAGs. You are probably unhappy, and it's highly possible that if you collaborate on Airflow, your teammates might have been unhappy as well. The good news is I do have some solutions for these problems, and I'd love to talk about how to put them all together to make sure that we can reduce or maybe even remove the unhappiness altogether, because I don't like people to be unhappy when they're working with Airflow. So let's start with that first one, where you have a DAG that works locally, um, but not when you deploy it. This is a classic stepping stone that it works on my machine problem. And it's, it's fairly normal. If you're working in a shared airflow environment, or like you don't want to push your DAG to production when it's not ready, so you work on figuring out the kinks locally. And then when you do push it to a fully deployed version of airflow, it totally doesn't behave how you expected. And in my opinion, this, this is unfortunately fairly common. Airflow is pretty complex, and we have all kinds of configurations and connections that we need to make it work. Connections to our data sources, data syncs, permissions about who should have access to what and what tools should have access to each other. And getting that perfectly mimicked in your local environment can be really difficult. The good news is that I do have a solution for this. That is having multiple deployed Airflow environments. In other types of software engineering, we have multiple environments to ensure production stability to our end users. So why shouldn't we doing why shouldn't we be doing that with our data pipelines as well? So at minimum, I recommend having two deployed versions of Airflow in addition to whatever you're using as your local development environment on your machine. And I'll call these two your development environment or your dev environment and your production environment and or prod. Uh, you know what works best for your organization. Maybe you like to throw a staging environment somewhere in the middle. That's great. My feeling about it is you should only have as many deployed instances of Airflow that you are willing to manage and keep in sync with each other. So if that minimum is two, great. If it's like three or four and you have that totally under control, awesome, do it. So let's talk about what this minimal situation looks like. We'll start with your local environment. This is when you're using something like Airflow Breeze to do your development on your machine. 
It is the Wild West. It is yours. You can do whatever you want. This is your sandbox, your playground for figuring out how to make this DAG work in the first place. If you completely mess up your airflow environment, guess what? You can just destroy it and make a new one. It is a wonderful, beautiful, safe environment, a cocoon of learning just for you. So then one level up, we have our development environment. Once you are ready to take your DAG out of your local environment, your cocoon of learning, and actually try it in a system that is more realistic for you and your team, this is where you should deploy your DAG. This is probably a shared environment, but it's where you and your team do your debugging. It should be as closely uh, similar to your production environment as possible. It should have a nearly identical configuration, like the connect should have connections, plugins, Python packages, the version of Airflow should all be identical to your production environment. This does not mean that it should be connected to production data sources. Instead, it should be connected to very close mimics of those data sources. So say you have DAGs that pull from something like S3 or Google Cloud Storage. If you are pulling data from S3 or cloud storage in prod, you need to be pulling data from a different, like a dev version of your S3 or cloud storage bucket in your dev environment. That way you can figure out all of these issues that may arise when you have your whole system put together. Another advantage of having this dev environment is you can test out things that you might want to try or add to your production environment. This is the only case where I think that these two environments should be out of sync. Say that you're working with a Python package in your environment and you have version 4.2.2 installed in prod and you want to see if you can make a new feature in 4.2.4 work. This is where you could try installing that Python package with the newer version in dev. And once you validate that it works, you can promote that Python package to prod and have them in sync. All right, so I keep talking about prod. Finally, let us talk about this final of the environments. Prod should be your tightly guarded special environment. It's like the total opposite of the wild west of your local environment. You should consider doing things like practicing the principle of least privilege. Figure out amongst your team, does everyone need to have access to this environment or should we have some kind of rotation where only certain people are managing it? It should never be that only one person has access to it, but think about how to find the right balance of protecting the environment and the integrity of your environment and the DAGs within while also not making it a complete and total bottleneck for your team. This will look different for different organizations with different numbers of DAGs and people working on them. In the production environment, you should also only be deploying DAGs that have been thoroughly vetted and tested in dev. You never want to deploy a DAG where you're like, I don't know, it might work. You should only be an it might work if you're saying that it already did work in dev. If it's not working in prod, it should be a surprise if it's not working in prod because you've validated it so many times before. You should also do things like be strategic about when you're deploying your DAGs to prod. Find either uh, the best time to do it, or if there is no best time, the least worst time to deploy them. And make sure you have a rollback procedure in place in case you deploy a DAG that behaves unexpectedly. And these are all procedures, processes that you should document in a shared way with your team. And if you're the only person who works on Airflow, I still firmly believe this is the kind of thing that you should write down so it doesn't become institutional knowledge that's just trapped in your head. It's also a gift to your future self because you don't have to remember all of these things that you're trying to do. You have it written down somewhere. All right, so we're feeling a little happier. We have multiple airflow environments. Let's remember the next thing that was making us and our DAGs and our teams unhappy. Ah, yes, this is the losing track of what you have and haven't tried to make something work. Let's say you have a problem pipeline. You're trying a bunch of different things to fix it and you just can't remember what you've tried and you're desperate to get it fixed. Or a DAG suddenly breaks and you go to fix it, but you vaguely remember, oh man, I had to fix this a few months ago. And this thing that I'm thinking about, I know I couldn't do it, but I can't remember why and it was something weird. Or you inherit a DAG from someone that you now maintain and you have no idea why it's the way it is and it's not behaving as you expect. 
these situations are all terrible. So there's a good way that we can avoid them or at least make them a little bit better. And that is our good friend version control. It's best practice to use version control to keep track of any other kind of code you're working on. Teams do it because they want to be able to see when changes were made, what those changes were, why they were made in the first place, and also who did it. Doesn't that seem like info you would want to know about changes in your DAGs? There's no reason not to treat them like you would any other production code, even if you work by yourself. And this is coming from someone who does a lot of work on DAGs by herself. Version control is the best gift you can give to your future self. So let's talk about two different flows. I'll go through the solo flow where you're the only airflow person on your team and how you can still use version control to make your life a little bit easier. And then what it would look like if you are working with a team of people who work on DAGs. So if you're by yourself, it's pretty simple. There's two steps. If you make a change to your DAG, well, first of all, you need to have all your DAGs in a repository. Um, and if you make a change to one, you need to make a commit with a detailed message about what you did. It can't just be, changed something. You need to actually be like, I changed to use this operator because this. Just enough to help you or someone else, if they inherit this from you, understand what you're trying to do. And then you can push to your main branch if you want, or you can do a development branch, do whatever flow works for you, but just make sure it's a good commit message. And then if you're with a team, you'll make a commit with a detailed message, just like you would by yourself. You'll push to a branch that's ideally not your main branch because then you will open a pull request, have a teammate look at it to make sure they agree with what you're doing, look out for any possible gotchas, and then you can merge those changes into your main branch. Everyone is happy. You know what's going on with your DAGs. You know where they've been. You know where your teammates or you want them to go. Okay, already feeling happier. So what's next? All right, it's that big red broken DAG error. I have a confession. I don't necessarily have the fix to fix all of your broken DAG problems, but this proposed fix, testing your DAGs, will hopefully prevent the broken DAG error from happening as much. I mean, version control and having multiple airflow environments will also reduce the number of broken DAGs, but this is another way to do so. So we test other production code before submitting it, and I firmly believe we should also find ways to test our DAGs. This also comes with the caveat that the testing strategy that you use might be different than what's best for another organization. And it's going to depend on what kinds of DAGs you're working on, if they are auto-generated and basically the same DAG a thousand times, but you're changing a variable, you have to figure out what works for you. But there are a few different strategies I'm going to share with you. And I will make these slides available after with clickable links to some of these testing resources. So one resource that's available is the Airflow CLI um, and some methods that are within Airflow. You can use this to check for syntax errors in your DAG. Like bare minimum, it's good to check that your DAG compiles because so many of the broken DAG errors I see are just a silly Python syntax error. And if you can prevent those like, oh, face palm errors, it feels good. You can also use the Airflow CLI to check for task errors. You can write unit tests if you want. You can do unit tests for validating DAG structure, or if you are writing custom hooks or operators in your environment, those hooks and operators 100% should be unit tested. I know that's not actually testing DAGs, but it's something that you should do to help the health of your DAGs. If you're using hooks and operators that are built into Airflow or come as part of provider packages, you don't need to worry. Those are unit tested for you already. Another type of testing that you can do is a more manual way, which is just running through the DAG in your local environment, that local cocoon of exploration and learning. That's where you can have those DAGs and see how they work. And hopefully that will help prevent the brokenness because if it's not broken locally, it's less of a chance it'll be broken in dev or prod. And then because you have those multiple airflow environments, you can try running it in your dev environment to see what's going on. So these are the resources I said will be available when I share the slides out after this talk. Um, there is some documentation in our Google Cloud Docs about testing DAGs. There are some documents in the Airflow repository itself and in the Airflow Docs. There was a talk at the 2020 Airflow Summit about uh, 
testing Airflow DAGs and an accompanying blog post that came out a few months prior from GoData Driven. And Astronomer, who's another major Airflow provider, has a testing guide as well. And they're all worth checking out. All right, and then the final thing that's been making us unhappy. Have you ever made perfect changes to a DAG to improve it and then realized you forgot to put them in your production environment? I know I have because I am only human and I am unreliable, but you know what's not? Robots! In my lightning talk at the Airflow Summit last year, which is 2021, I told folks, robots are your friends, and I stand by this. This is an excellent case for automation. Why rely on an unreliable human to do something that automation can do more consistently? With tools like Google Cloud Build or GitHub Actions or many more, you can make sure that the most up-to-date version of your DAG is deployed to Airflow when certain conditions are met. It can be something like whenever a change to that DAG is merged to your main branch, you put it in your environment, or you could have them synced on a nightly interval or every few hours. Again, you know what works best for you. Okay, so now that I've talked about how these four solutions, multiple airflow environments, version control, testing your DAGs and automation kind of look in a silo, let's see what a combo of them could look like together. Uh, this is an architecture diagram that is part of a tutorial that's on cloud.google.com. And if we take a look at it, we have a human who worked on their DAG locally and they opened up a pull request in GitHub. Someone reviewed it and some tests were run in cloud build that validate that the DAG compiles. Once the PR was approved, the teammate merged the pull request. And then once that merge happened, cloud build some automation, merged those changes into cloud composer, which again is hosted managed airflow. A human looks to see if that DAG succeeds in the dev environment. And if so, then they choose to manually promote it to production. If that DAG fails, then a human needs to address those failures and the cycle of opening that pull request with a change begins again. So now let's take a look at where the four parts are in here. We have multiple Airflow environments. There's a development and a production environment and the hidden local environment that was used before the user opened their pull request. We have version control. There's a whole reviewing process that's happening in GitHub or your favorite version control system. There is DAG testing. There's both some automated testing, which in this case is looking for uh, syntax errors, and there is manual human verification of how the DAG is performing in the development environment. And there's automation. There's automation like I talked about, which is the copying the DAGs to the development environment, but also I actually have automation of my tests here as well. There's a potential opportunity to add automation, copying those DAGs into the production environment, but I specifically chose not to have it here because while I do think robots are my friends, I also think that my production environment is special and needs to be protected at all costs, and I don't quite trust robots to do that merge for me without human verification. There probably is a world where having some automation there would work, um, but my use case is small enough where it's safer for me to do the, product, uh, the promotion manually than with a robot. And you will know um, for your use case if the bot is appropriate or not and if you can afford to trust that bot. So now it is time for a demo of what I have in practice. So with that architecture diagram, I have a repository where I have some DAGs and I made a change to this DAG. Oops, I removed some build files that weren't supposed to be there in the first place, but I also removed a test comment from a DAG. And just to give you an idea, this is what my Airflow environment looks like. And this is that sample DAG. If you look, it has this comment in here in line 14, this is add a test comment. So this pull request is aiming to remove this test comment. I also have some automation in place. I have, these are called cloud build triggers. One of them, this one is called test DAGs and it runs whenever a pull request is opened against the main branch of my repository. This other one, add DAGs to composer, 
whenever there is a change to a file in my DAGs folder in my repository, it copies those changes over to Composer. So in a normal team flow, I would have someone review this pull request and I wouldn't review my own. And that is what you should do. For the sake of this talk, I do not have someone with me, so I am going to merge my own pull request. We can see that I tested, the test tags job ran successfully, and we can actually see it in cloud build. I can tell you that the majority of the time of this build job is spent installing Airflow. Um, otherwise, it's pretty quick. So there's our success where we can see it installed requirements, which took a minute, and then it ran two seconds worth of syntax checking tests. So now we can merge that pull request and we'll go over to cloud build again, look at our build history. And what we're looking for is to see, okay, great. This add to composer job is happening. You can see my job history and that it takes about 40 seconds to run. And then we'll see those changes in airflow, which will be great. So I will keep talking while that's running. Um, you can also implement this. I know it popped up here. You can implement these kinds of workflows with GitHub Actions as well. That has pretty great integration with Google Cloud. I haven't tried it with other cloud providers or other versions of Airflow, but you may have other build systems that you're more familiar with, and you should choose the tools that work best for your use case. Okay, the job finished. I talked long enough. Now we just have to wait for those changes to make it to Airflow. Okay, DAGs, Composer, Sample, DAG. I think it's that one that I changed. I changed Example DAG. Okay, great. Let's look at the code. Loading and it's not, it's making its way through the Airflow web server, but it should be there soon. Uh oh, all right. Well, we can also look at my composer environment itself and start to see this is what happens with live demos, my friends. We can see if it is in the DAGs folder. You can see that I'm human too, and this is a real live demo. All right, it was updated at 9.53, great. Okay, awesome. So I can see that in this DAG's Google Cloud Storage bucket, there is no comment there. I'm just waiting for it to make its way. Yay, it's gone, it worked. Okay, with that, that is what I have. I do have time for questions if folks have them. Teza, I'm not sure if we do it via chat or if we have another way of doing it. Um, these links, I have some important links for you. The Airflow Summit, you can register for and submit to the CFP at airflowsummit.org. Uh, there's a Cloud Composer tutorial with this info at this short link. And these slides are available at this short link. And they have all of these clickable links, except for the link to the slides themselves, because that is impossible to do. And that is what I have.